think at these times, I think people are looking for new solutions. The work that we're doing is so important to our profession. I wanted to try to pick on projects that uh, could have like real serious impact in the world. This is not about solutions. This is about finding what the question is. The nugget of discovery that each one of us will make, whether big or small, is relevant. Good morning, everybody. Um, thank you for, for joining us today. In this spirit of truth and reconciliation, I want to pay tribute to the Indigenous peoples who have provided extraordinary stewardship of this land for many thousands of years and acknowledge their deep connection to and reverence for the land and the ecosystems therein. I'm privileged to live and work on the traditional territories of the Blackfoot Confederacy, which includes the Siksika, the Gainai, and the Pakani. First Nations, as well as the Sutina and Stony Nakoda Nations. The City of Calgary is home to Métis Nation of Alberta Region 3, and by the signing of Treaty 7 in 1877, the University of Calgary acknowledges that we are all treaty people. Good morning. My name is John Brown, and I am the Dean of the School of Architecture, Planning and Landscape at the University of Calgary. Welcome to this information session for our Doctor of Design program. I'm joined this morning by Professor Barry Wyland, our Graduate Program Director. Barry and I co-lead the DDES program, which is now in its second year of operation. Also on the call, I believe, this morning is Jennifer Taylorfer, our Academic Programs Coordinator. Jen will be your primary point of contact when you apply to the program and will help walk you through the admission and registration process. Finally, I'm very grateful to have Cecile Cote join us today. Cecile is a planner who has worked in several cities across Canada in the area of Indigenous homelessness. And she's also a student in the first year of the DDES program and is going to speak to you later in this presentation about her experiences. I'm now going to share my screen and give you an introduction to the program. Following that, Barry will take over to introduce Cecile and answer any questions that you might have. So I will share my screen. this. There, can everybody see my screen? Somebody? Yes. <laughs> okay, thank you. All right. So um, who comes to become a, joins us in, uh, in the Doctor of Design? Um, after having done, having had two classes and, and looking to, uh, to, to find applicants for our third, um, DDES candidates come to us with considerable practice experience. And that practice experience um, has allowed them to develop an expertise in their discipline. Uh, they've also, at the same time, identified a problem or an opportunity uh, within that work that, you know, we've all seen that where it's like, oh gosh, somebody really needs to change that. Or I wish I could, I could do this. I, I, I wish I could do this, this uh, capitalize on this opportunity. But, as we all are, we're, we get frustrated by the transactional nature of practice, the, the, the everydayness of, of what we have to do. And it really doesn't provide much intellectual space to pursue those opportunities. And so they just keep, we just keep saying, oh gosh, somebody really needs to do that. And, the, the, and, and, uh, and then the third characteristic is a burning desire to elevate their career and change the world. And if that sounds like you, then you're in the right place because uh, we've created a program that helps people, uh, senior or established practitioners with an idea to activate that idea and, and make a difference. Got to figure out how there. So the Doctor of Design is a doctoral, de a doctoral degree for practicing design professionals who want to elevate their professional career to a new level. And it has three specific um, features that are important. The first is mentorship. So you work with a, uh, a, a supervisor, a supervising committee. Uh, you work with Barry and I in the first year. Um, and you are, you are provided with a mentor. And I, and I use that word very specifically 
you're not, you don't come to the doctor of design program to learn something. This isn't like a master of architecture, a master of landscape architecture, or a master of planning degree where you need to learn new skills. You already have the basic, the, 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 the knowledge, the detailed specific knowledge of your, from your career practice in what it is that you're going to do. What you need is guidance um, to, to help you in this, this particular part of that journey, which is to articulate and implement those, that, that opportunity. And that's what mentorship means. The second is structure. This is a three-year degree. It's compressed. It's, it is, um, and I'll describe to you the structure. We've set it out so that in a, in a very um, measured period, you are able to achieve uh, your goals. Uh, this is not an open-ended um, type of doctoral studies where you're working for seven years and trying, struggling to finish. If you follow along um, with our structure, then, then you will achieve your goals within the, the, the time frame. Of course, if something comes up and you need to have an extension, that's not a problem. And then the third, and this is probably the most important component of the degree, is collegiality. You work in a cohort of, cl of classes. And we actually have the class of 23, which is our first year, which was our first intake class of 24, which was the group that is in first year now. And, and you'd be applying to become part of the class of 25. The, 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 the classes actually um, work very closely together. The people in those classes work closely together. In the first year, you meet once a week. Uh, with your classes and with Barry and I to workshop your project. We use a design-based, studio-based model for, for, um, for working through your, your research. Um, and then we found that the class of 23, which is now in second year, that they actually continue to meet monthly uh, to talk about their projects. And then, of course, we also have our the two symposia a year, each six months, where the entire group of Doctor of Design students gets together for a symposium where we all watch and participate in each other's uh, presentations and workshop those. So the, 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 the goal of the Doctor of Design is to produce work that is relevant to you, relevant to our dis discipline. It's applied, it's something that you can take into practice and it's impactful. It makes a difference. This is not the creation of a document that sits on the sits on the shelf that um, is read by a few a few a few other academics. This is a very practically based program, and it is about developing either an innovation of things or an innovation of ways. It might be a new product, a new building type, a new uh, a, a new material thing, or it could be an innovation of ways in terms of a policy, a business model. And that, and that those innovations are there to disrupt the status quo of conventional practice, to amplify your career and, and make the world a better place. So everybody at least knows if we're talking about doctoral programs, they know, what a, they know the word PhD. The DDES is a relatively new form of, of doctoral program. Uh, the doc, it's a, it, and there are doctors of design, doctors of business, doctors of nursing, um, and it's really set up for practitioners uh, rather than people that are in their you know, late 20s that are moving out of a master's degree, going through a PhD program with the goal of becoming an academic, which is really the PhD route. A DDES is, is more practice-based and for more senior people. So in, in both, however, you're creating the generation of new knowledge. You are creating new knowledge in, in both, both of these. In the PhD, generally, it's based on a scientific-based inquiry, and that's also if it's in a social sciences setting. So you are specific, you 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 explore the literature to find a very specific niche of of, un, of unexplored content or area. You then set up an experiment, you conduct the experiment, and that might be in a social sciences setting. It might be a survey um, of uh, a study of, of, of people or that sort of thing. And then you analyze the results and you write the results. That, that's, a, that's a classic, the classic PhD model. Doctor of Design is uses a design-based inquiry. It builds on the model of inquiry and generation of knowledge that we as design practitioners use on an everyday basis. So it's iterative, it's creative, it is um, somewhat intuitive, but it is rational. 
uh, and it, it leads to the creation of, of new knowledge, but in a different way. Uh, where the PhD, as I mentioned, is academically focused, the DDES is practice focused. Uh, the PhD uses a theoretical methodology. The Doctor of Design uses a work integrated research methodology. We actually, it's actually imperative that you integrate this program and what you're doing here within your practice, within the day to day of your practice. I'll talk about that in a little bit more. And in the PhD, you build a deep knowledge from literature reviews and an analysis of the field in order to do your work. With the DDES, it builds on the tacit knowledge that you have that emerges from a deep professional experience and unique personal insights. So a PhD takes five to seven years because you're taking two to three years at the very beginning just to do that deep knowledge dive into the literature and analysis of the field. You've already done that. That's what that 15 to 20 years of experience has given you is that you already have that knowledge. So that means you can move quite quickly then into the project itself. So in a PhD, it's, it's pretty much a work stop out. You stop your life, you become a full-time student, you do your research, you then go back, it, you do that research in an academic setting, and then you go back into practice and, and it elevates your, your yeah, and you start to apply it and it changes that. With the work integrated learning uh, model of the Doctor of Design, you actually are doing it while remaining in active practice. And what we found, I went through a similar program uh, almost, I, I guess almost 10 years ago, I started 10 years ago this, um, this year, I graduated in 2016. Um, you're actually starting to implement the, some of the findings of your DDES during your program, and then that actually elevates. So it actually, it, it, it begins to elevate it more quickly. So you, you, you're able to maintain your practice. You're not stopping out of your life. Um, there is no residency requirement. You stay where you are, um, and then you, you're able to start implementing it. And so things happen more quickly. So let's just break it down and look at that little component a little bit more closely. And we use the double diamond model that comes from the UK Design Council as an effective way of trying to articulate the process that you go through, that we take you through, that we mentor you through in this three-year period to do this work that you that you want to do. And it it's a diamond in that it, the first stage is expansive, looking at discovery, it then converges down into a, into a deliverable where you're defining what you're doing and then it expands out again as you're, you're, um, you're going up into your, to, to, to develop your idea and then it converges again as you go to the, to the delivery. So in the, um, in, in the first, the first phase of that, which we call the problem space in the first component of that, that, uh, that you do in, your, in, in, in the first term of your first year, you're doing a precedent review, you're looking at your past work, you're, doing, you're looking at the work of, of, uh, of your peers, you're developing a context, a community of practice, you're, you're looking at the people that you work with on an everyday basis, plus the people that are doing other similar kinds of investigations and dealing with those same problems around the world. You're articulating all that, and you're starting to diagram all of that into this problem space. In, this, in the winter term of your first year, you're starting to define, you're articulating your program of work. So you consolidate that discovery phase of work. You finalize your research proposal, which is that red dot in the middle, which is your brief. And then you develop your creative project, which I'll talk about in a few minutes as the test bed experiment. So that takes you through the first year. In the, uh, the next phase, which is the solution space, that's where you are, you, you define, we help you to define a small creative project that is a, a kind of test bed of your, of, your, of, your, um, of, your, of your research, where you're able to, to explore that. And that's about an 18 month process. So that takes you through, through to the, uh, the fall term of your third year. Um, and then you, and, and your, um, you, you use key informants, which I'll talk about in a couple of minutes to gain perspective on those results. And so that becomes this, this kind of, I, I, 
I, I'll use the word experiment, but it's not really an experiment. It's a smaller project within what you're within what you're doing that allows you to to uh, to test whether the 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 opportunity, the problem, the solution that you're developing works or not. And then in the final stage, um, deliver, which is in the last six months of the program, you're reflecting on the creative project and what the key informants have told you about that. You're speculating on the potential next steps as you implement it into your more fully into your career or into your into your practice. And then you consolidate all of this work that you've been doing over the last two and a half years into a final document, which is a combination of writing and graphics and, and uh, physical models, whatever it happens to, to be, and an exhibition. And that exhibition is public and your present, your, um, your, your um, examination is public, it's recorded, it becomes part of the, of the oeuvre of, of work that, you, that, you've been, that you've been doing. So if we, if we look at it here, um, expand it out over the three years of the program, in the first year, you do, you start, uh, and those, those dots, the blue dots and the ochre dots are, are the symposium. So in the first term, you do two courses with Barry and I, um, meeting once a week for two hours. Uh, we combine the coursework into that one present, into that one contact time. You generally work you have one other meeting outside of court class time with a smaller, you, you work in groups of three to, to, to workshop your ideas. So that's that first part, that discovery phase, and you present that at the fall symposium in November. In the winter term, you then are defining that and you're starting to converge down into what exactly is your research going to be about? How do you, what, what are you going to be doing as you launch into that phase? three component. And then in the summer or the, the spring of, of, uh, of that, it's a summer session, but it's in, it's in late May, early June, you have your second symposium, which is actually a candidacy uh, examination where your, your research proposal is then reviewed. And, um, and, um, and, and then from there on, you're, you're sort of basically telling us what you're going to do in that, in that, for the rest of your of your program, I should say just maybe to 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 back up a little bit. The symposia are a critical component of our um, of our of of the Doctor of Design experience. It's a two to three day um, over a weekend, so it's a you know usually a sort of Thursday night, Friday, Saturday part of Sunday when we're all when we're when we have our our full cohort starting this year. Um, where everyone gets together. Unfortunately, it's been on Zoom uh, so far, but we're hoping that moving forward, we're all going to be able to get together. We'll uh, congregate in Calgary. For those of you that are international, uh, international candidates don't have to come um, if they're not able to. We, we have a remote option for that. Um, but you, you all come together. Everybody gets an hour to present their project. We bring in a group of distinguished practitioners from around the world to, uh, to, to review the work. Your, and, uh, and it is a very rich experience. Uh, I think it's probably the best part of the Doctor of Design. If you think back to your, your grad school days when you were in your professional degree programs and the studio experience of, of having a crit, of having a final presentation, standing up, defending your work, describing where you are in, in the process, Getting that feedback from your from the um, your mentors, from the the uh, group of invited guests, and from your peers is is really an amazing experience. And so, you know, what what if you think about your 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 fellow colleagues, your fellow classmates, they're all experts in their own field as well in architecture, planning, landscape architecture. And so everybody has something to contribute. And so those experiences, that symposium are, are really amazing. And as you see, there are six of them as we go. So then if we move to, to year two and the first part of year three, it is that creative project piece. And I want to spend a couple of minutes to just chat about that a little bit more. So there are th three phases to that. What we ask is we use this, we use something called design science research methodology, which 
um, we'll talk a lot about in the fall in the first year term. But basically, what it does is it uses uses a, a methodology to be able to get some peer review feedback on what it is that you're doing. And that's really the key component, I think, of the value add for the doctor of design. Aside from the, you know, the collegiality and the mentorship, um, you could do a lot of this work on your own. Of course, you don't, be, we don't because we don't have the time and we don't have the, the structure to be able to do that. Enrolling in a program like that carves that time out. But really, this piece is important. So in the first term, as you're defining your project, you identify four to seven key informants, people that are, are that you respect, who are working in the area. They may have done a similar thing in a different field. They might have done it in a different geographic location. They may aspire to do that. They may, they're, they're, they're deeply engaged. Most of them are practitioners. They might be clients part of a client group, sometimes they're academics, but you define that. You meet with them at the beginning of the project and you, you say, this is my, you know, this, you describe your project and they give you feedback on how they see the problem, on how they think you might explore. What are the things that you should consider? Basically, it's developing a program for your project. So you, you have that. That sets up a kind of design brief for this creative project, which you're going to do in about a year. You've, you've got about a year to take that, to take that project on. You then finish that. You finish that in the, in the summer of year two. You then go back to those key informants who you have not talked to since that first, that since, since uh, the, 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 the summer of year, of year one, and you present your project. You said, this is what I've done. And they give you feedback on that. And they'll say, you know, John, you know, you, 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 you were interested in, in uh, oh, I'll give you an example. My, 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 my research work was in aging in place in the development of a laneway, a portable laneway house. So, I, um, so, you know, they looking at that, you know, they would say, well, you know, I think that, you know, these three things that you did, I really think those are great. I think you missed something here. And did you think about this? And what you're getting is unvarnished, a peer review of your creative project. Very, very valuable. You then, at the end of that, which you present at your symposium five in the fall of your last year, you then take that. And in the deliver phase, you are not only just collating all of the work that you've done so far since the discover phase and putting it into a document and exhibition, what you're doing is reflecting on, on the key informant. You're reflecting on your experience, reflecting on what the key informant said and say, well, you know, what, what, you know, doctor this said and, 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 you know, the, 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 you know, lead designer of this group said, you know, I, I agree with these things. I don't agree with this. You know, um, and 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 based on on that information, this is what I think. How I speculate, I might. What would be the next step in the research? And that that all comes together, and you have a symposium defense uh, at the symposium. Um, we we typically start with the most senior students uh, on the first day, and then work our way back to the junior students, and each of the senior students. Um, are also part of the of a of the design review of a, of a of a junior, so that we're able to again get that cross connectivity. So that's basically the structure. And if you follow the structure along, you come out with a coherent plan and uh, an example project that you are able to then elevate in and and leverage into your into your career. So what does that mean? Now we can see it's actually a little bit longer. That that. You have, this, you have this idea, this opportunity, this thing, this burning desire to do something, to make a change that you have, and you're frustrated because you can't, that's, that's all, that you don't have the time to do it. That's over here. You then start the program, and that kind of launches three scales of things. It launches, like I'm interested in, in aging in place. Uh, so that's my ongoing personal research agenda. I did a piece of it, which was around developing this portable laneway project. And inside of that, I did a very small kind of prototype version of it. And so that, that prototype builds into this larger project, which folds out into this. This is the time that you're with us, 
But what we found in the experience of doctoral programs like this is that the research continues. You, you're, you're, you're able to, now that you have a kind of methodology in place, you're able to continue that personal research agenda. So you get a bump here up in your practice during the process as you're implementing it because you're doing all this work within the body of, within the context of your practice. That leads to this elevated. And then as time goes on, this might, this, this ongoing agenda might last for five years, it might last for 10 years, it might last for the rest of your life, but you'll, because of the methodology that you've learned within the DDES, you'll be able to continue to have that feedback where it elevates your, your practice again and again. So I mentioned that we had two classes. Uh, the first class of 23 was six students, a really nice mix, two architects, two landscape architects, a planner and industrial designer. We had three who are located in Calgary, one in Edmonton, one in Toronto, one in Vancouver. The class of 24, we saw our first international students. So we, again, a very good mix of an art, four architects, a landscape architect, three planners, and then someone who's both an architect and an urban designer. Um, and then we have uh, three, three of those people are in Calgary, two are in Vancouver. We have one remotely uh, from Nigeria, another from Saudi Arabia, and then someone who is in the United States at the moment, but is working in Nepal. We had nine students for that. And in the class of 25, which is going to start in the fall of this year, we're looking between nine to 12 students to, um, to, to join us. So just to finish off, the tuition, is, as, uh, as, as I'm sure you know, is $15,000 a year. There are three installments, uh, $5,000 each. The application process is pretty straightforward. If you've been out of school for a for, for, for some period of time, don't worry about your GPA too much. We do need to have it. We do need to get transcripts from your schools. But what we're really looking for is, is professional accomplishment. So that's where we need a portfolio, um, letters of reference, and, and, and a research proposal, which is something we have to call this because, because of being within an academic institution. That's what you call things, it's a holdover from the PhD. What I'm really, what we're really, what Barry and I and the, and the admissions committee is really looking for is a two page expression of what it is, what it is that you've done, what it is that you've discovered as a problem or an opportunity and what it is you'd like to do. It doesn't have to be, don't feel that it needs to become some rigorous thing about experiments. It's just an expression of what it is that you're interested in. And we really highly, highly encourage that you set up a meeting, a Zoom meeting with, with myself and Barry to discuss those interests because invariably, um, you know, we're able to help, first of all, help you discover whether it is a DDES project or whether it's a PhD project, in which case there's another route that you, that you go down uh, and to help you kind of explore that. We take the first year of the program to really define what that research is. If you remember that, doc, that diagram that I showed you here, this is where it's in the summer of your, set, of your first year that you're really going to know what your research project is. So all we need is some idea of why you're doing it, what do you see, so that we can tease that, tease that out and, and, and ensure that, that the project that you're interested in is DDES, it's something that that makes sense within this design-based model, and that it is, you know, that that you have the sort of sufficient background to 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 be doing this because we're relying on that tacit knowledge that you already have. So, uh, if I came if I came into the doctor design and said I really am interested in doing a, you know, a uh, uh, heavy timber high rise, well, I've never I don't know anything about heavy timber or high rises. My world is residential, my world is aging in place, but that would not be appropriate. Well, my world was residential and I was interested in aging in place because of some client work that I had. So you, you understand what we're doing. And then of course the deadline is coming up, it's about six weeks away. So this is our last recruitment session. So I think with that, um, I'm going to stop sharing. And I think we have another video to watch, is that right?
implementing the, the program of my research in real time. I really wanted to talk about the emotional connection of love that we often have to our community. This local area plan tool can provide a bridge to that understanding. The places that have done this very successfully show the return and the value that's placed in their community. The cohort being brought together with such a diverse group of practitioners provides such a value in a way that is not something that I had anticipated. I'm still amazed right now sitting here how little innovation has gone into uh, the process of aging. And the more I dig into it, it's at the very least a complex problem. What if we more purposefully and more warmly and widely engage elders into this innovation ecosystem? The medium that we're designing in is, is actually alive. We just spend hours researching bad ecology and native plant assemblages and dimensions of the pond to optimize food production and the ability of the bat to swoop in and get its food, make that really strong connection between ecology and design. Re-examining our relationship to nature as designers to support natural systems, to let nature guide us. My bold ambition is to create a new environment that fosters innovative typologies and housing design. I want to illustrate that people are more adaptable to change than they believe they are. I've really been interested in the disconnect between mass housing and architecture. Also, is it possible within this environment to define an urban architectural design toolkit that can address bespoke solutions and yet remain affordable and not become formulaic? My entire life, I've always been connected with the land. The tradition of landscape architecture shows a link between it and public health. In my practice, I'm involved in a wide range of project types, but those in which get me the most excited are related to public health and well-being. What am I missing? Why is this ground so shaky? Is it even relevant anymore? With a ground that's inherently fragile, broken, how do we heal it? I think that's my question, is creating a vocabulary, a space, a process which allows for that healing and which allows for it to be foregrounded in the practice and what would that vocabulary look like? What we'd really like to see come out of our own work is, um, is a case study for others to be able to look at their practice. I want to challenge the dogma of architecture. This reminded me that I needed to be, be more careful in the way that I was making decisions about the business, about the practice, about charting my own course through it trying to design our own design process and design our own future as designers. Well, welcome back, everybody. Um, as John mentioned, my name's Barry, and I'm the uh, uh, Graduate Program Director for the School of Architecture, Planning and Landscape. And it's my pleasure to welcome uh, one student from our, our 24 cohort, uh, Cecile Kotek, is a, an accomplished planner who joins us. Um, I think your practice has been based quite widely and for a while in Winnipeg and, and now in Calgary. And with, uh, I, I think, uh, an opportune, but also uh, a rather sensitive focus on Indigenous homelessness. And, and with that, I think I would like to invite you to perhaps share some of your experiences coming out of the first term, that, that sort of the first phase, the discover phase that John referred to, and, and also perhaps speak a little to your, to your experience in the first symposium. So Cecile, welcome. And if you could please, the, the floor is yours. Great. Thank you, Barry. Thanks, John. Hi, everyone. My name is Cecile. I'm originally from Nigeria and the Philippines. I've lived in Canada for about two decades now in Winnipeg, and I currently live in Calgary. I'm in my first year, as Barry and John have stated, and I'm a planner with over a decade years of experience in the public and nonprofit sectors, specializing in designing and managing community development projects. <clears throat> Sorry, I have a bit of a cough. <laughs> Um, I have a keen interest in Indigenous homelessness and social justice issues. 
and my research focus is going to be on indigenous homelessness. <coughs> Excuse me. I am five years into the program, so pretty fresh out the gate. However, I would say I am very much enjoying it. And I bet the word enjoyment isn't something that you would hear students in doctorate level programs um, describe their experiences with. However, that, has, that goes to show that this program is a best fit for me and the stage of life I'm in right now, and also my future trajectory and where I wanna go in my career. Now I have you guys here, I wanted to just highlight four top components that I found very beneficial in the program and that helped me during my decision pr process. And I hope that it does help you during your decision making process. The first is the program is a practice based research program and John has already stated that. And what that means to me is that being a planner in the housing and homelessness sector and working closely with the indigenous population groups that I work with. It is important for me that my practice is relevant, it's culturally appropriate, sensitive, and impactful. And as my research is embedded in my practice, it does challenge me to think outside of the box, to pause and reflect, because I've been in a very fast-paced practice, and I haven't had time to really think about my practice and how I've served my clients in the past. And this program has put me in that position to just take a pause and reflect on how I've practiced in the past, what has worked, what hasn't worked, and look into the future, seek out ways to improve my approach to better meet the needs of my clients. This program, one thing I found very important is that it doesn't rely heavily on theory. And that's important to me because in my academic journey, especially in my master's program, I found that there was a disconnect between theory and practice. And coming out of my master's program, I didn't feel quite ready to um, work in the field. However, this program does focus on my tacit knowledge and it helps me generate from my years of experience and reflecting and improving and refining my practice. It helps me identify the gaps in my practice and what I want to build on and improve. And also I have the opportunity to apply that in real life and to see how it works and then move forward in my career. The next component is the structure of the program. This program is structured in such a way that candidates can balance the demands of the program with their personal and professional lives. And this is important because we've been in the field, we've been practicing, we've been working for quite a while. And thinking about going back to school is definitely not a decision that we take lightly. There are a lot of considerations that go into it, into that decision-making process. When I was in my journey of um, figuring out what program I wanted to go in, into, I researched a lot of program, PhD programs. I researched some in Europe, in the US, and also in Canada. And I found that their program structure just didn't work with the stage of life I was in. Having a young family, moving to Calgary, and establishing myself as a consultant, moving away from the public and nonprofit sector. I found that this program structure and philosophy was a better fit and aligned better with my needs and where I wanted to go in the future. And as Barry and John has already stated, the program is structured in such a way that we have three courses. So these three courses are meant to prepare you for the last two years of your, of your program. And we finished the two courses in the first year and it's pretty straightforward. And after those two courses, we have the symposiums, which are, we have two symposiums every year, and it is quite a lot. It can be overwhelming. However, the symposium really pushes you to think about your research and refine it and then propose it to your, your panel, the other attendees, your, your um, classmates as well, and for them to give you feedback and figure out how you can now proceed to your second semester. We had a symposium in November, and it really forced me to think more about my topic and how to be better prepared coming to this next um, semester and how to refine my subject a lot more. Because the program is a practice-based approach, you're able to generate these research topics as you work from your experiences. And you get the opportunity to practice it in real time and to see how relevant it is. And also make those adjustments and modifications if necessary in your practice. You're not taking time off work to go back to school as John has stated, or sacrificing a lot of time from your family and friends. 
you get to gain a doctorate while working on refining and improving your practice to better meet the needs of your clients. The third component is that it is a multidisciplinary program. And it's not something that I expected. As a planner, it was very um, appreciated that I got the opportunity to work with other arch with architects, landscape architects, as well as urban designers. And I found that this diversity in how I learn is very important to me. Having access to other professions creates a different dimension to my learning. And it provides me with the opportunity to learn from different professionals, which gives me different perspective because sometimes you're stuck in your viewpoint and this opens up your mind and opens up your heart to other perspective and challenges you out of your comfort zone. In addition to the program being multidisciplinary, as John has already touched upon, my cohort group is very diverse. We're diverse in age, cultural background, research topics and areas where we're also in different stages of our career and we're located in different countries and cities across Canada. I find that this diversity brings with it a depth of knowledge and creates a very interested and intellectually stimulating learning environment. I get to learn about what's happening in all these different countries that my classmates are in, in real time and from the source. Lastly, supports. When we're thinking of going back to school, we want to know that we're supported. We want to know that in addition to our family and friends, the university is also supportive and accessible when we do get into the weeds and we will, we will stumble, we will have challenges along the way. However, what I've found is that my classmates have been invaluable. In addition to the classes where we get to talk about our challenges and get to brainstorm ideas and work through things, you can also contact with your classmates or your professors, other staff members at the U of C outside uh, of our classes. And I've had numerous meetings with my classmates through Zoom and through texting, figuring out ideas and helping work through these ideas. And so that is very important to know that there is that support system in the faculty as well as your cohort group. And I would leave you with this. In general, even though I've only been in the program for five months now, it has already created an opportunity for me to elevate my practice. And I find that it's definitely given me the tools and resources that I need to be better prepared for the next stage in my career as I build my consultant firm. And that's all I have. And I'm here to answer questions. I know when I was going through this process, I reached out to um, some students just to answer questions about their experiences and to help, help me navigate through the process. Thank you. Oh, thank you so much, Cecile. That was a, that was a great summary of uh, your four main areas. I thought that was an excellent uh, uh, overview of what the four year or what the first year has been like been like for you so far. Um, so again, just to, to kind of hit some of the high points, the Doctor of Design is a doctoral program that is intended to, to work with folks who are interested in developing a research interest from within their practice, something that emanates out of their practice. It is a, a curated process that's three years long. The first year is really targeted at developing uh, the proposal uh, through the coursework that we have, um, through you know, an interrogation of one's practice, um, understanding the, the, the context of that practice, communities of practice, and then working through to develop a, a research proposal. And then the, the back two years are really where you get a chance to kind of experiment and, and pursue that creative project from within your practice, um, bookending it with key informant interviews that can help bring uh, an exterior perspective um, and a, 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 an ex and a professional and um, just outside point of view and perspective on the on the research work that you're doing, and then that your doctor of design experience can effectively initiate something that becomes much more longer term sort of um, uh, ambition in a in a type of elevated practice, and that's in a way that are those are the high points of of today's discussion, and I really think that one of the things that you know certainly Cecile brought our attention to is the intense cohort connection that comes from working with your peers uh, as one progresses through the, through the process. I know that um, 
The coursework is only within the first year, but we actually, uh, we meet on a regular basis, John and I, with the second year cohort, who also meet on a regular basis just within themselves. So they're typically trying to get together once every couple of weeks just to, to sound out their ideas and connect with each other and, and see how folks are progressing. So that, that, that nature of mentorship that John spoke to is something that definitely colors and permeates the program. Um, I saw that there was a question in the chat. Uh, do you need to have a master's degree or if you have um, an undergraduate degree with professional experience? Um, you don't necessarily need to have a master's degree. It really comes down to the quality of the professional experience that you're presenting and what that research project is that you're interested in. And so we, we, we tick typically will examine applications on a case-by-case -case basis based on those parameters. Um, so yeah, the short answer is no, you do not need a master's degree, um, but good question perhaps. And with that, I think we can open it up to, to other questions. Um, folks probably have some, 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 some things that they wish to explore. So by all means, you can either enter a question in, in the chat or you can uh, simply speak up and we can address that. Good morning. Uh, sorry, you guys hear me? Yes. Uh, thank you very much for the overview. I really uh, enjoyed every single board, let's say, because that's exactly what I'm looking for in, at this age of my uh, career. So, but uh, you know, most of the times I'm thinking about the supervisors. And every time I want to go on the PhD, the, the first obstacles is to find the supervisor. So just for me to understand for, for this program, is the supervisor is gonna be assigned by you guys and at which stage? Can I work with him like before I apply to the program or it has to be after like one year after I finish the program? Let me, let me let me take that and then and then Barry can 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 jump in. So so in a typical PhD program, your supervisor, it's very important who your supervisor is because you're looking to them as a as as someone who's already an expert in the field that you're working within, right? Because you don't really know, you don't have that developed knowledge. And so you're looking for them to provide you with that that deep understanding or to guide you into getting that deep understanding. You're coming to us as an expert in, the, in, in, the, in your field of practice. You've worked for 20 years or, or 15 or whatever it is and what you're doing, you know it. No other, no supervisor anywhere is going to have this, the level of deep knowledge that you need. That's why I, thought, I talked about it being mentorship. So what you have is someone who is in your field, is knowledgeable about your field, but is also knowledgeable primarily in this process and can help you ask, you, it's a sounding board for you, a way of being able to get guidance on the process, making sure that you know, have you looked at this? Have you thought about that? But it's not like, well, here's, here's a reading list of the 50 most important things, go away, come back two years later and we'll talk, right? It's not that. So you don't need a super, you don't need to find a supervisor. The structure of the program itself becomes the, the context in which you're learning. And you find in your community of practice, your key informants and others, the ability to go out and do that. It's very powerful to say, I'm a doctoral student at the university, at, the, at, at, a, you know, at a Canadian university, and I would like to speak to you about my project. That opens up a huge number of doors, as opposed to being, I'm a, an architect in private practice and I'd really like to talk to you. You know, like that's a much more difficult thing. Um, and so what we've, I found it when I was doing my doctoral studies, as well as, as our students are finding it, is that you, you can reach out to people around the world that you dream, would just dream of talking to and bring them into the conversation, either as a key informant in a very formal way right. or in a much more informal way. So <clears throat> we start, the, we, we identify this, the, the, uh, and, and, and link up supervisors in the first term, in the fall term. So it isn't, it's a negotiation, it's not a nego negotiation, it's the wrong word. It's a, it's a meeting of mind. So we suggest that we meet and make sure that there's a connection. And if there isn't, then we'll go, so, you know, we can find other flavor, but it's a much broader kind of, of thing. I hope that makes sense. 
Yeah. It does, it does. It does actually, I, I do understand. And, and just, just to add to that, the, the logistics of it are you apply to the program first. You don't actually have to have a supervisor confirmed and in place. As John says, within that first term, we will um, we'll make suggestions of who from our faculty could play that role of, of supervisor. And then you have an opportunity to meet with them to see, as, as John says, if there is that meeting of minds. Um, and then it becomes formalized within, within the paperwork that we have to file. Um, but it's not something that you need to, you don't need to have a supervisor confirmed in order to file an application and in order to, to begin to initiate the process. And so basically, you can also, sorry, just, just go ahead, go ahead, add, sorry, go ahead. One, one comment to that is that you, um, you are welcome to reach out to people ahead of your application. Um, you know, just to explore and say, you know, I'm interested in the Doctor of Design program. This is the topic that I'm interested in. And just to initiate that conversation. So that avenue is open to people, but you don't actually have to have something in place prior to making the application. Sounds good. So basically, the next step is uh, just scheduling a meeting uh, with John uh, or Barry just to review the. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that that's really the net. We just have a an hour Zoom call and just chat about it, and and uh, yeah, and 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 I see Nancy's question around design education. We actually take a fairly broad, um, a broad uh, sense of topics, and, and and that that would fall within that. I think that what I'd suggest, Nancy, is that you just set up a meeting where we can talk more specifically about about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Are there any other questions? Thank you for that, Jen. It's helpful that you can you can take point on organizing those meetings. That's excellent. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, that is. That's great. Um, while while you're thinking about your 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 questions, maybe I'll, I'll just I realized that one of the things I didn't talk about was um, the sort of benefits uh, the, the that come from from having this a degree like this. So I mean, obviously, the first would be the the, 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 the benefit of <clears throat> having that three year period to develop an innovation, to develop an, an opportunity. Um, and that for some it's, I'd say for, for maybe 40% of our, of our class, cl of our two classes, it's actually looking at making a pivot in their career, either changing a position and developing and they want to articulate their expertise, develop it and then either launch a new company uh, a new consulting, take their existing company um, in a new direction with their partners, uh, which is what I did, um, or to, uh, to use it as a leverage to, to move, to move uh, your employment somewhere else uh, with, that, with that kind of, of expertise. This, the second benefit is that, and, and this comes a little bit from the first question, is you have access <clears throat> to a very broad range of experts, <clears throat> not only to get your um, to get advice and 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 guidance and, and information, but also just to expand your professional your professional um, network, and and that's not just the broad, the range of experts <clears throat> at the University of Calgary, but but beyond that, far beyond that, um, you know, our our students are working with people around the world um, as as part of their community of practice. And, that, and those things that, that actually is important, right? As we all know, business is about connections and being able to make those connections um, both, with, both, both within the specifics of the people that you've connected with, the people on the panels, your colleagues, all of that is there. The third is that you learn as a result of spending three years really thinking about what, what is your passion? What is your area of it? What is your area of expertise? And what is your passion? And what are you do, trying to do? You learn how to very clearly articulate your work, your value proposition, what it is that you're doing. And what uh, the universe at, at RMIT in Australia, where I did my doctoral program, and that's been running for, for, uh, for almost 20 years or 30 years, I guess. The, um, it's been credited, the RMIT doctoral program in, for practice based for practitioners has been credited with the elevation of Melbourne, partly 
um, due to the to result of the elevation of Melbourne as a design center, because there were generation, several generations of, of senior practitioners who learned how to talk about their work to their clients in very, very compelling ways. They actually can, can talk about it so much more clearly. And that actually is, is, is important. And then the final benefit is the credential. Quite frankly, it's maybe sounds a little transactional, but but it, but it is important. You are learn, you are earning the uh, ultimate credential within the discipline, within any discipline, which is a doctoral degree. You are a doctor, doctor whatever, and that means something. You can say on your on your CV that you have this, that you are a recognized expert in this field because you've spent three years articulating that and, and getting to that. And that means something in the world. Uh, and I certainly found it. Uh, and I know that my colleagues from when I was doing my doctoral degree find that. Uh, and and that, that, that is, that is a, a, an additional benefit. Yeah, if I can add to that as well, I find that this program has given me an opportunity to really focus on something I'm very passionate about that in the workforce, I didn't have the opportunity to do. And working in the homelessness and housing sector, we, like I said, is very fast paced. We're always trying to put out fires and we are assigned projects. Sometimes projects that you maybe don't feel too passionately about, but you have to do the project. And coming to this program, it has given me the opportunity to really identify a gap in my practice and in the field and propose that refine that project and propose it. And also it has opened doors for me to access other professionals that maybe I wouldn't have access to if I was just at, working as a pr pr practitioner. So it's giving me that opportunity and that um, access to other professionals to refine that project and also add, a, add to that field, but fill in a gap that we have been missing in our field that we haven't maybe had opportunities to reflect on and and practice as a practitioner. Thank you, Cecile. I see that there's one question in the chat uh, from Tarid on what is the scale of development you expect in the design, a design element of the built environment, a typology, a policy, et cetera. Um, and you know, coming from, from John's presentation and the way that we set up the DDES, a lot of that is really specific to the individual research project that, that students bring forward. Um, and what we try to do is identify a scope and a range of work that is achievable within that three-year time frame, but it may also become something that is foundational to an ongoing project that you pursue in your professional life. And so there, you know, we have, for instance, in the video, we saw Teresa and she's a planner and she's looking at a way to try to really extend the love as it were within the planning process and her involvements within community. And part of what she's looking at is a way to, to, to broaden the, pro the planning process. So people within a community have, I think, an opportunity to, to have some authorship over the way that their community gets developed. And it's much more, about working it from a proactive point of view. So it's becoming, if you will, a piece of policy that's developed that is um, in an approach and a process. And part of what she's working on is how to refine that, again, within a reasonable scope that is achievable within the, within the, the, the research time of the DDES. And John, I don't know if you'd like to sure. add to that. But. Yeah, yeah. So, so basically what she's interested in is she's responsible for, for for implementing uh, increasing density in existing communities. And of course, there's a huge amount of backlash around that, right? You can just, everybody pretty much, I'm sure everybody at the table knows what that, what that would be like. So what she's doing is trying to reset the way in which community engagement happens rather than her as planner going there and saying, here's our plan, we're gonna increase density and everybody gets mad at her. What she's interested in is how, and there she, what her discovery was, People got mad because they love their community and they feels under threat. So how can she how can she recast the conversation so that the future of the of the of the community is the thing that they love and that they don't see development as a threat? They don't see the planner as being this this person who's coming in to do something negative. So so that's 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 the kind of core. What she then is 
That's, that's her core research idea, which is going to take her the rest of her career to figure out. She then has carved out a three-year program that, she, that we're working through. And within that is a one-year um, creative project, which is basically to develop and test with three communities, meetings, a strategy. So, I mean, this is a very, because it's practice-based, the whole notion of scope of the project is very much based on practice. So what can you do in three years? What can you do in one year? Let's carve out something that is possible. We don't start out <clears throat> with an ideal thing that then takes 12 years to finish and then you just get this illusion and quit. What we do is we, we, step, we work backwards to finding out what really is the thing that you need to be um, taking on. And, and, and we can talk about that we can talk about that if you want to set up a meeting with us, we can talk about it. But, but largely that's what the winter term of the first year is about, is setting up what that scale and scope of the project is so that it's a maximum benefit to you and it's achievable. I see we're at the end of our, our time. If there's one last question, maybe we could take that. If not, I really appreciate you all being here today. I hope that uh, that that I hope all of you will apply. Um, and uh, if you haven't, even if you're just interested in learning a little bit more um, and you want to bounce some ideas off of off of us, we're happy to have a phone call, uh, a Zoom call to to do that. If you have technical questions, reach out to Jen. Thank you, Cecile, for joining us today. We'll see you in a couple of hours for our class. <laughs> Actually, about half an hour, I guess. So that's great. And um, Barry, thank you as well. Thank you, John. All right. Take care, Thanks. everyone. Bye-bye.